I'm not sure that Main Freight's culture is uh, about the current leadership. It's really about uh, the people who started the company and the vision that they had uh, early in the piece. But um, I've got 15 minutes to, uh, to get across to you guys what's taken 32 years. To, and really, we've only just got started. Um, to have a vision is, uh, is one thing, but to, uh, to achieve it is another. And a vision isn't a strategic plan, by the way, so throw away all the uh, business books. Not much that uh, Main Freight has done built around the business book. However, to understand our vision, uh, firstly, you know, what is Main Freight? Uh, here in New Zealand, because of the brand and what we've got on the road, a lot of people think of us as a trucking company. Um, any analyst who comes to see us and wants to... to you know, write up their report based around Main Freight, the trucking company, doesn't get a second interview. We see ourselves as a, as a global supply chain logistics provider, and uh, the, the reality is trucking is only a very small part of what we do. We commenced business in 1978 with $7,000 in the pocket and a Bedford truck. Now we've still got the truck, and we've got a little bit more than the $7,000. We began operating in Australia in 1989, and uh, we publicly listed on the NZX in 1996. Uh, Today we've got a market cap of about 650 million and 166 branches around the world, New Zealand, Australia, USA and Asia, and uh, 3,250 people. Uh, our sales revenues this year will exceed uh, 1.2 billion. However, the interesting thing that a lot of Kiwis don't understand is that 67% of that or about 750 million or 15 million dollars a week is earned offshore. So, what are our ambitions, or if you like, our vision? After a few wines on the plane, it's world domination of the freight industry. <coughs> a few more rums and we own them all. Uh, seriously, we've set ourselves some quite large bee hugs, which if you don't know what a bee hug is, I suggest you go and find the book Good to Great, written by Jim Collins. A bee hug is a big, hairy, audacious goal. Uh, these goals we construct and share with our people, and our shareholders, and because we write them in the annual report, they're likely seen by our competition. Perhaps uh, some examples of that in this latest annual report we said we'd have 300 branches by 2011, so that's only doubling what we already have now. We would have doubled our revenue from our 2006 result to get to 1.3 billion in 2011. It looks like we might get to 1.5 billion. 400 branches by 2012. To be the largest international freight forwarder in New Zealand and Australia by 2012. And what's got the market really excited was to have an excess of 2 billion in sales by 2015. Arrogant, pie in the sky stuff, maybe, but for us, we've got to get a line in the sand, and I think uh, you've got to have, uh, you've got to be ambitious about what you want to do with your business, and uh, frankly, this country could probably do a few things a little better if the government was to put a few lines in the sand. Um, why do we think that we can achieve this? Well. Frankly, we are an ambitious bunch of bastards, and we believe we can. Uh, we have a passion, and importantly, our people have that same passion. And uh, I think the important thing is, if you're going to have a vision, then you've got to get that passion across to your people. So how do you get your people to buy into those goals? Well, for us, as Greg made the point, it's our culture, or if you like, the way we do things around here, the main freight DNA. So... That culture needs leadership, and uh, for our part, I thought that I would share a little bit of that leadership stuff with you guys. Hopefully up on the screen here behind me, you can see <clears throat> what we call the three pillars of main freight, culture, family, and philosophy. I think what I draw your attention to is the simplicity in the words. There is no corporate bullshit in that. It's understood by all our people. It doesn't matter whether they're loading freight in Invercargill or cutting a bill of lading in Shanghai. Um, they do understand it and they've bought into it. Um, you know, I think... I, I won't go through them all, but, you know, we always under-promise and over-deliver. Uh, 
to us that's important. We have a hundred year philosophy, so the decisions we make are about being around for a hundred years, not next year's profit. Um, you know, there is no staff in Main Freight, um, and for that matter, we're all team, or we're part of the family. And after a red wine in New York with our black coats on, we can see ourselves as part of the mafia family. But importantly, as I heard a chief executive on the radio being interviewed about redundancies a year or so ago, there are no FTEs in Main Freight, full-time employees. What a disgusting way to speak about your people. For us, our people, uh, that is our product. We don't have any other products other than our service and the energy and passion of our people. So those are available if any one of you want to understand those a little more and take a copy away. I'll, I'll make sure that those are, are there for you. But the key thing is that all our people have bought into those things and they contributed to what they look like. So just to talk about, us, about some of them, we aspire to be a 100-year company. So that means we'll buy our, our premises. That doesn't mean we'll take short-term leases. Where possible, we'll buy our own property. We will invest in R&M. We will make sure we spend money and we'll make decisions around being around for a long time. So it's not about just what's there for tomorrow or what's there for the next week. It's about a decision and that includes how we treat our customers, how we treat our people. It's about being there for a long time. You know, we seek to delight our customers and that doesn't mean taking on the previous speaker's words that we have to over-service them. We just want to delight them. And we have a quality focus and a measurement with very high standards and we try and beat those standards every week. The key thing, and I hope you're getting this in the, in the presentation, is that our people are key. So we will spend a lot of money and a lot of time training and developing our people. And that means that we promote from within. So you won't find us in the papers advertising for a branch manager, a salesperson, a senior manager, or for that matter, a managing director. I hope. <laughs> the reality is, you start with us on the floor, and you handle the freight, and you learn the business from the floor up, and you have a career with us. And for that, that builds our culture and builds the understanding of the business. So if you're dealing with a main freight person, you absolutely understand that they know the job. We share our profits. So 10% of the profit in the business in each branch is shared equally with everybody. There are KPIs in there that if they exceed the quality standards, we'll share a bit more with those that have actually uh, made the mark. So there's a, bit, a mixture of capitalism and there's a mixture of, of, I suppose, a little bit of communism where we mix the profit 10% equally across everybody. There is no bureaucracy, hierarchy or superiority. There are no car parks with our names on them. <clears throat> we measure our profits weekly. There are no budgets and there are no strategic plans. So every week, 166 branches on a Monday night ring in their profit or their loss. And importantly, whilst we find out about them, they understand what money they made the week prior. There is no cross-subsidisation in the business between the branches or the divisions and we're only interested in long-term profit which for us builds a business that will endure. So we have branch managers that can make short-term profit, easy profit available for them. We don't allow it, we're looking for long-term profit and at always we're trying to reinvent ourselves particularly when we've got a, a service provider like Genai giving us technology every second week. Um, one of the important things when we got around the world was we needed to find a culture for each country. So it was all very well to have a main freight New Zealand culture and the disciplines and so forth are non-negotiable. But when we went to Aussie and said, this is the way we do it in New Zealand, they went, really? <laughs> so that taught us a valuable lesson. And so therefore we've created a main freight Aussie culture, a main freight Asia culture and, an, a, and a culture for the USA because they're totally different again. Um, and we think that we might have made it when we've got those nationals leading those businesses profitably and with growth and in our style. Just some quick points about leadership within the business. Leaders in today's world have got to have an ego for the business and not for themselves. They've got to have a passion for the business, but it's not about promoting themselves. 
And you've got to have the right people on the bus. And you've got to have those people in the right seats. And if they're not the right people, you've got to get them off the bus pretty quickly, preferably before the next stop. People must be allowed to grow. So in Main Freight, you're allowed to assume as much responsibility as you want. You can make as many decisions as you want. And if you make a mistake, just don't make the same mistake the second time around. But it's about giving people as much responsibility as possible. We promote from within and we make sure that we keep re-refreshing -re our opinions and our thoughts. I'm sure what here in this room, there's plenty of it, but we would rather have EQ in our people, some emotional intelligence, rather than IQ. Because that EQ is valuable in terms of leadership, in terms of understanding what's going on with your people. And of course, as long as you've got people with egos for the business, you can train successors. Those that have an ego for themselves don't naturally train their successor. We must have an aspiration to be bigger and better and of course to have aspirations for not just the business but for the community and for the environment. That's why Main Freight looks after about 45 books and home schools here in New Zealand, have started it in the USA and, has also, and have also started it in, uh, in Australia. And in the, uh, the initial days we thought that we might only be able to look after five schools. There is no bureaucracy and corporatisation, it just slows you down, therefore all our offices are open plan, there are no hierarchical structures and we never use the word, the word head office, corporate office or headquarters. We sit at the branch where we make the most money so we can smell the diesel. We're in the, the mode of ready, fire, aim. So we're ready, we fire the bullet and we'll shape it up as it goes down the street. We never ever live in a question mark, it's yes or no, it's never maybe. And one important thing which we think works for us is that we never ever employ a consultant because of course those are the people that come down out of the hills to kill the wounded after the war is finished. Be careful of the success that you have. We call it the wallpaper of success and it's about MBWA. To find behind the wallpaper where the success is, is where the cracks are, management by walking around will be your biggest asset. And of course we have a commitment to win and as one Tana Umanga has said, it ain't tiddlywinks mate, we're here to win. So just to close and, um, and if I may, some advice to this business that you people belong to. It's our experience that you can't keep your good people unless you have growth. So therefore, your company, I think in the last couple of years, has had a lot of distractions. Some of your own, some brought about by others, external factors. Our advice, and we've been through a little bit of this, perhaps not as large as what you have, but ignore it all. Ignore the rubbish, ignore the bullshit, and just get on and do what you do best, and do it better than the others. Do not live in a question mark, either as a company or as individuals, so make those decisions, search for your destiny, put the line in the sand, and get on with it. And something that we're passionate about, being a New Zealand company, is that while you have some size here, um, by world standards, you're relatively small. Therefore, you should use that advantage, the ability to move quickly, to go and grow your business offshore. This country, New Zealand, needs bigger businesses and it needs to earn its money out of bigger markets. Therefore, we would encourage this business, GNI, part of Telecom, to get off its butt and grow and grow, go and grow your business offshore. It will help us as a customer it will help your shareholders, it will help you as people, but more importantly, it will help New Zealand. And by Christ, New Zealand needs that right now. However, the only people that can achieve that for this business are those that are sitting in this room. So there's your challenge. Thank you very much.